Please be seated. And good morning and welcome to the Church of the Resurrection on this beautiful sunny day. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> I don't have any announcement, but I think Brian has some good news. So just uh, a reminder that uh, upcoming is the uh, Potluck and Prayer um, event, which is on Friday the 16th. It starts at 5.30. Uh, and if uh, we do ask you to RSVP to the church web uh, uh, email uh, so that we know who's coming. And any questions, we can uh, direct to Rebecca at the back there. Uh, parochial news. Let me uh, get into some good and bad news. So bad news. I better sit down. We had posted our position description for uh, uh, to try and attract some applicants. Um, unfortunately, there were none uh, for this first go around. The job position has been posted again. Uh, we are posting it, unfortunately, as a part-time position because basically that's what we can afford at the moment. Um, a full-time priest uh, with several years' experience, salary housing allowance and benefits is anywhere from ninety to hundred thousand dollars a year and that's not in our range so we are looking at a part-time position at this point uh, three-quarter time is what we would like to uh, to go which is what Jim is doing with us now so we haven't had any applicants but the job posting is open again um, second to that uh, I'm very pleased to say that Jim has extended his contract with us uh, and will be here with us until the 15th of October. Uh, so that's, that's the good news. Uh, we know Jim's away today. Unfortunately, he's down at the armories or something in Dundas doing a, uh, doing a service down there. So uh, we can all uh, give him congratulations for sticking around with us next week. <laughs> Please stand as you're able. And as we begin this service today on Trinity Sunday, the Church of the Resurrection recognizes and acknowledges that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Hodoshini and the Anishinaabe. The territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaty and is directly adjacent to Haldeman Treaty territory. We seek a new relationship with the original people of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. We now have our opening hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Holy God, holy Holy and mighty, mighty, holy holy immortal one, have mercy mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Creator, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture reading. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the continuation, excuse me, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ.
Please be seated. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday, which might also be interpreted as Unity Sunday, but not to be confused with conformity or sameness. Unity is impossible to create without generosity. Love and humility in inevitable conflict. The Trinity itself is an example of the tension, the beauty and mystery of unity. In today's call it, we pray to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship in unity. As Christians, we worship the unity, but what does worshiping the unity look like in our lives, the church, and the world? Unity does not mean sameness. If God wanted sameness, God will not have created the world as it is today. Just look around this gathered room and notice the differences you have between your neighbor. Even if it is someone related to you. Our entire origin story the creation of the universe starts with sameness. Darkness covers the face of the deep and ends with rest in a kaleidoscope of diversity. God allowed light to mingle with darkness. God created the sky to complement water. God created the sun and the stars. Two different methods to give light to the world. God allowed creatures of all kinds to populate the ocean, the sky, and the land. And the scripture tells us that God created every living creature that moves, winged birds of every kind, and everything that creep. And to humankind, God said, be fruitful and multiply. God must have known that to be fruitful and multiply will continue to expand God's example of diversity. God knew that our children, even children born of the same parents, would be different. That trees, plants, and creatures will change and evolve over a long period of time. That all that lives and breathes might also create and explore and discover. We do not worship a God of sameness. We worship a God of unity. And the Holy Trinity is an example of this kind of unity. Different, mysterious, communal, and relational. Each element of the Trinity can be described as a different identity. But the answer to how many gods we worship is always one. You may have heard of the same, of the many ways in which our tradition has described the three persons of God. And it's also possible that you may have explored your own. However, the most orthodox is Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the members of the Trinity are distinct. But there are times when we may find ourselves relating to one more than the other in different seasons of our life. But who do you relate to today as we begin the Pentecost season? Is it the creator of the universe who brought all things into being? Is it our own sibling Jesus, the Christ, who walked, cried, got angry and hungry alongside us on the dusty road? Is it the mystery of the spirit, the towns of fire that burn on the disciples and still burn on us today? In today's gospel from the evangelist Matthew, we zoomed into a moment where Jesus is commissioning his disciples to make more disciples. Jesus tells them, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Jesus sends his disciples out, knowing full well that each nation is saturated in its own context, culture, language, tradition, and family systems. Each nation is different, but by uniting different nations into following one Christ, Jesus is inviting the church into tension, into relationship, into the juiciness of difference. Jesus also commanded his disciples to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Another community that contains tension, relationship, and juiciness of difference. In God's very essence as the Trinity, God models unity, not sameness. As the Council of Nicaea declared and we affirm in the Nicene Creed, both the human Jesus and God, the parent, are the same substance. All disciples of every tribe, town, and nation are baptized in the name of the same Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And among each of them, is the power of Christ to the end of age. And because God created the world with diversity, not sameness, because Jesus walked alongside people of all backgrounds and went so far as to communicate in languages of all kinds at Pentecost, God understands difference. God understands relationship. God understands community. God understands diversity. Amen. prayers used today are adapted from prayers published by Costa Blanca Anglican Chaplaincy of the Church of England in Spain. I invite you to prayer, with the response being God of love, hear our prayer. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, on this special day, we have come before you to offer our praise and adoration. 
You are God, the creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ, the savior of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. You are holy and blessed. One God, eternal Trinity, be near to us, the people formed in your image, and close to the world, your love brings to life. God of love. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we pray for your church throughout the world, for those that are thriving and those which have lost a sense of direction. We give thanks for our parish, its clergy and its people, and gladly acknowledge all the gifts you have given us through its life. We ask you to open wide our hearts that we may welcome the stranger and share our faith with others. In our parish today, we pray for Barbara Harper, Wilfred Helam, and Victoria Helam and Dan Martin and their families. You, Lord, have chosen men and women to serve you in the ministry of your church and have given them a perfect example in the person of your son. In our diocese today, we pray for Bishop Susan Bell, the Dunn Parish, Christ Church, and St. John the Evangelist, Dunville, the Reverend Canon Richard Morse, priest in charge, and the people of that parish. God of love, yeah. hear our prayer. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we remember Charles our King, Mary our Governor General, Justin our Prime Minister, and all who bear the responsibility of leadership. We think today particularly of all in authority that they may never be tempted to abuse or misabuse their power. Let your will for our world be accomplished through the decisions they make and give them a vision of peace and reconciliation. For you, Lord, can find a way when men and women are lost. God of love, hear our prayer. God in three persons, Blessed Trinity, we pray for peace in the world, particularly in Ukraine, Africa, and the Middle East. In our communities and our families, create in us a love for peace. Not peace that is absent from struggle, nor peace that is blind to injustice, but the peace that makes whole what now is broken. God of love, hear our prayer. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we remember this morning those who are sick, sad, or lonely, and those who are brave and patient when things are going wrong. We pray that may, they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. We pray particularly for Marilyn H., Frank, Albert, and Fred. John and Sylvia, Norma, Diane R., and Mabel. Susan T., Millicent W., Dulcie, and Emmy Miranda. Amanda C., Phyllis C., Serge T., and Kyrene. Lorena and Ever Portillo, Andrew and Emma B., Wayne L., Kevin B., Eileen, and Benham. And here, as is our custom, I ask your personal prayers, silently or aloud. Hear our prayer. God of love, hear our prayer. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we remember before you those who have died, 
particularly Judy Linkletter, whose funeral was held here this week, and the Venerable Harry Dawson, faithful servant of the Anglican Church of Canada. We pray for all whose life is saddened by the death of a loved one. Be with them in their loneliness, and let them know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. God of love, hear our prayer. Parent God, lead us into the coming week. Son of God, help us to believe that you are close to us. Spirit of God, keep us from making mistakes. Triune God, help us never to disappoint you. And when we face hard decisions or difficult work, when we enjoy ourselves and have fun with others, may we know that you share these times with us. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Maker. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Let us pray. Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that here in your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord.
May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the God our Creator. It is right to offer thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because you have revealed the glory of your eternal fellowship of love with your Son and with the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and singing. Gracious God, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus the Christ to share our fragile humanity. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you opened the path from brokenness to health, from fear to trust, from pride and conceit to reverence for you. Rejected by a world that could not bear the gospel of life, Jesus knew death was near. His head anointed for burial by an unknown woman. Jesus gathered together those who love him. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to his friends saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And now we gather at this table in response to his commandment to share the bread and cup of Christ on dying love and to proclaim our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Breathe your Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the universe upon these gifts that we bring to you. This bread, this cup, ourselves, our souls, and body, that we may be signs of your love for all the world and ministers of your transforming purpose. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, creator of all, and we bless your holy name forever. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, our Savior taught us, so we say.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, many we, we are, are one body, body because we all share in the one bread. This is the table of the Lord, ready for those who love God and those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have never been before, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come because it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. These are the gifts of God for the family of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory. Who are the three persons, yet one God, now and forever? Amen. Amen. Please stand for the doxology. <laughs> Father, who first loved us and made us accepted in the beloved Son, bless you. Amen. God the Son, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, bless you. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts, bless you. Amen. The blessing of the one true God, to whom be all love and glory, for time and eternity come down upon you and remain with you always. Thank you. 
hair is done. Our work in the world has just begun. And fill with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.